Ready. Joining me now, Henry Olson, author of the book, The Working Class Republican, Ronald Reagan, The Return of Blue Collar Conservatism, and Leon Wolf, managing editor of the conservative website, The Blaze. And Leon, let me start with you. Um, what is your takeaway? Is this, is this panic time? Well, it's, it's very difficult to put lipstick on this pig if you're a Republican. I mean, it's, you kind of saw the montage there. I think if you're looking for a bright light, the honest thing you would have to say about Connor Lamb is not that he was a particularly conservative candidate, it's just that he was a particularly good candidate. He's telegenic, he works hard, he relates well to the people in his district. And you might say, look, most Republican challengers are not going to draw a candidate who's as good as Connor Lamb for their opponent. But still, uh, it, it's worrisome. And probably more worrisome are things like the number of retirements that the Republicans are facing. Uh, the redistricting in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin is going to cost them some seats. Uh, just the realignment politically may wipe out the GOP in New York and California and a lot of moderate seats that have been held. So they're facing a lot of structural problems going into November, for sure. You know, Henry, the, the biggest warning sign to me for Republicans was this item. Uh, it was from Politico. It was Republicans abandoned tax cut message in Pennsylvania special election. And let's, if you put aside the substance of whether you think it was good or bad policy, let's just put that to the side for now. This was going to be the big political winner. I mean, I heard Republican after Republican saying, we, this is the thing we delivered. We got it done. And what they found on the ground in this district was there, people didn't really care. That's absolutely right, is that it may excite some hardcore Republicans, but it's not going to move soft, former Republican-leaning voters away. Uh, the people who are upset at Donald Trump, who are former Republican voters, are people who are upset about culture, they're upset about presidential behavior, they're upset about chaos in the White House, and there's no amount of a tax cut that you can pass that's going to change that. The House Republicans need to look back into their bag of magic tricks, because tax cuts is not going to work it for them. In fact, it, uh, in fact Leon, today, Kevin McCarthy McCarthy was saying, well, we're working on another, uh, we're, we're thinking about another round of, of tax cuts. <laughs> and I thought, I don't think that's the issue here. No. And, you know, I think that it's most likely you're going to see something that's very similar to what happened to Bill Clinton in 1994 and to Barack Obama in 2010. I mean, it's a fairly common phenomenon, and it might hit Trump maybe harder than either of those guys uh, will. At, at the end of the day, I think it's a fairly common phenomenon in America that once we elect a new president and people see what he's all about as an actual governing, you know, president as opposed to a candidate, they say, well, we need to put the brakes on this a little bit. It probably applies to Trump a little bit more more than uh, right. even your usual president. Yeah, I should say that was Kevin Brady, not Kevin McCarthy, who, who, who floated the new round of tax cuts. I do think there is, here, here's my theory of this, Henry, and, and I was sort of perusing your book before uh, mm -hmm. you came on the air. I think one of the things Donald Trump really did successfully in the primary was connect to a certain part of the Republican base that isn't really that excited about the supply side Bible and yep. have a bunch of cultural concerns that he spoke to and actually have these sort of impulses about tariffs and protectionism they like. And uh, it seems like the Republicans have ended up in the worst of both worlds in this. They don't have that part of the message cemented to those voters. And they've also got a guy who seems reckless in the White House as opposed to the best of both worlds. Yeah, well, they can't change the guy in the White House. The guy in the White House is the person who can change himself. But I think it was very telling that the last poll that came out in this race, the Monmouth poll that had Connor Lamb winning by a few points, also had tariffs popular in this district. Hmm. This is the sort of thing that House Republicans need to understand, is that the swing voter, the voter who can be moved back, is the voter who actually wants direct government action to help people on the ground, whether it's gun violence or whether it's tariffs to protect American jobs. Supply side is not a political elixir, and it's not going to save the Republicans when it comes around to November elections. Leon, there's, there's something like 100 seats that are more competitive than this one, at least on, on, on paper. Um, do you think the Republican Party is ready for the, the, the amount of contested seats they might face? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the, the one saving grace is, of course, you know, kind of the, the Senate side of the equation yep. is going to be a very difficult uh, road to hoe for, for, for Democrats, for them to even pick up two seats, which is what they would need to take control of the Senate. But uh, privately, a lot of people are saying that the House could indeed be a, a 45, 50 seat bloodbath, if not worse. Uh, and, and if so, then you have to wonder what, if anything, Donald Trump will be able to accomplish in the remaining two years of his first term. Henry Olson and Leon Wolf, thanks to you both for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Joining me now, former Missouri Secretary of State Jason Kander, now President of